welcome to the Car, Sim and Race Driver Show, presented by Hugh Hattrick. Drive fast and try not to crash. to the Car Sim and Race Driver Show with me, Hugh Hattrick, and a very special guest tonight, Stuart McFarlane. Thanks very much, Hugh. Thank you. Well, Stuart, now you are quite famous, certainly in, <laughs> in Duns, because you were in front of thousands of people. In fact, the, the video that was done recently, two weeks ago, um, when Jackie Stewart visited Duns to open officially the, the new uh, Jim Clark Motorsport Museum, um, you were the interviewer. And you managed to speak to him in front of everyone that was watching. A good, oh, must be a good few hundred people at least in the boiling hot summer sun of Duns um, for nearly half an hour um, without any kind of issue at all. You, it was just like watching Sky Sports. Oh, gosh. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so we've got Stuart tonight here um, to, 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 to give us revelations of what it was like to, um, to speak to Jackie Stewart. Um, it was a fantastic occasion. How did how did what how did you what, how did you enjoy it? What was your feeling on the whole thing? It it was it it was a very important day for the town because you look at the the story of of this um, developing project. You go back to, I suppose, the early very early days of nineteen sixty nine, mm -hmm. and the concept of a trophy room had been devised, and. Of course, this is just months after Jim Clark was killed in yeah, April yeah. 68. The idea of a trophy room, the council coming forward and offering the family an opportunity to present some of Jim's trophies, some of the memorabilia he'd collected in his many races. Um, there's a beautiful uh, portrait painting of him that was uh, presented and unveiled at the opening of the, the trophy room in 69. So you had this uh, almost a shrine Mm. as it was originally. That, that, that was its first incarnation. Yeah. And Jackie Stewart was there. Jackie mm. Stewart came very early to see it, to help open it, to support it. And, of course, this was the time when Jackie Stewart was going on to win his first world title, yeah, you know, yeah. part of the, the experience he had. And we, we, we've talked before about his, his relationship with, with Ken Tyrrell and, and Jim's relationship with, with Colin Chapman and how... Uh, a team manager and a driver's relationship was so different yeah. then to how it is now. Then Jackie Stewart returns in April of 1993 right. to open yeah. the revamp museum. Yeah. Yeah. He comes in 2015 to help celebrate Jim's world title number two, the second world yeah. title he won, the Indianapolis success, his Tasman series success, Formula 2 success and his second place in BBC Sports Personality, yeah. all in <laughs> 1965. Yeah. Sir Jack is there. Yeah. So to have him back in the town again, it was squaring the circle. You could see it's come full circle. You have this fantastic new one, uh, one million, one and a half million, one point six million, I think to be exact, um, museum. Yeah. Uh, that houses this wonderful collection of, of trophies, of memories, of sounds, of visuals, and he's there to open it yeah. officially. Yeah. And he's there to stand in front of the, the people, and you mentioned quite early that, that the crowds were sizable, and to talk very openly, openly, very honestly, about one of his best friends, somebody he idolised, somebody he looked up to, someone who he shared a lot of time with and learned from and was also a confidant to. You know, it was a two-way thing. Yeah, yeah. Jackie's relationship with Jim Clark, very much a two-way thing. So to have him there, as you quite rightly see, it was a fantastic day. Yeah, it was a fantastic yeah. day. But that's just given, you know, the viewers and that a chance to understand the history of it. He wasn't parachuted in for a, a one and only appearance. Yeah, He's yeah, made he's private been, visits yeah. to the, the trophy room in in years gone by as well. So that support has been a, a constant thread yeah. throughout the history of the, the, the town's way of recognising Jim Clark and yeah. his achievements. Yeah. No, I mean, I just thought, I mean, <clears throat> he was very, very open. And I mean, normally you might expect an interview like that or a, a kind of opening ceremony to maybe last five or 10 minutes. 
and then they'll they do the you know they'll they'll take away the curtains and there's the plaque. Um, but you were talking to him for a good twenty five minutes um, at least, and, and he had he had plenty to say. Yeah. Um, it wasn't as if there it was there was a lack of any content. I mean, it, you kind of felt you were getting stuff that maybe nobody else had had heard. You know, it was it um, it really was um, it was like watching just a conversation among among friends. You yeah. know, the way yeah. that he was talking to you and. I mean, you, you brought up things like Charter Hall and Winfield and all the relevance of, you know, the, the, the history of, of the Scottish Borders motor racing um, and the fact we had all these incredible drivers coming to, you know, near Duns, um, you know, throughout the 50s and 60s that people would be amazed at um, in this day and age. You know, it's almost like having Lewis Hamilton in this yeah. day and, and yeah. Vettel and the Formula One yeah. squad yeah. turning yeah. up at Charter Hall um, to do a race, you know, to do some kind of thing. Um, it's it's oh, it'd be unheard of. Um, but we had all the famous guys and all the world champions, uh, many of them turn up um, at Charter Hall back in the 50s. Um, it, you know, Duns and the Bo Scottish Border seems to have this incredible motorsport heritage. I don't know if, it, where, if it's in the water or something, but, uh, you know, it, I think, and, and with the new Jim Clark Motorsport Museum, it's gone from being just a room to this colossal building. Um, of course, for our, for our viewers and readers um, and listeners, um, you know, we've got a simulator as well, which is fantastic. But I had to go and I was black flagged on all my laps on my first first run. Um, so I'll have to have another 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 show. That's a bad omen, if ever there was one. But, you know, <laughs> it was like... Um, but, uh, but no, it was great. And the funny thing was, uh, when we were there on the opening day, you know, we managed all to get in and we had invites. And I mean, it was a huge crowd inside um, when Jackie Stewart was being shown round. Um, but as he was being shown round, there was a chap sitting in the racing car, sitting in the simulator, who was the spitting image of Jim Clark. I kid you not. <laughs> he was an absolute spitting image of Jim Clark. I will show you the photograph. Um, I, I, if you'd put him in a suit, you would have thought that's his double. Unbelievable. Um, and they also we had, of course, Jim, uh, Jackie Stewart going next to the cardboard cutout. Um, and, look, and it was quite eerie because it was kind of, you know, he was kind of looking in that yeah. pic picture. And, and you kind of thought, would Jim Clark actually want all of this hullabaloo, you know, because he was such a quiet, kind of reserved kind of person. Um, but I think it's, it's so good that we have something to remember him by um, in, in such a way to celebrate what he can do. And I think for this future of motorsport too, it's a great way to bring the young generation in, you know. It, it is because the, the trust that were very much the, the cornerstone, the beating heart of the, the creation of the motorsport museum, the, the, the yeah. Jim Clark Motor Museum, to give it its, its, its full name, has been supported by Heritage Lottery, has been supported by local government and the council, but the, the trust itself has very much been the beating heart of this. Yeah. And without their vision, without their determination, without their hard work, the, the, the project would not have gained any traction at all. Yeah, yeah. Now, you, you touched on there, I think you mentioned both the, the, the nearby airfields yeah, uh, yeah. that are intrinsically linked yeah. with motorsport in the, the early days of, of um, Scotland's relationship with, with, with motorsport, the rel relatively early days. And people like Jock McBain, and they were visionaries, and yeah. they were able to take a, a post-war airfield yeah. and turn it into this fantastic circuit that people like yeah, Reg yeah. Parnell would come yeah, up and yeah. break... Circuit record. I think Reg yeah. Parnell still holds the Winfield. Wow. Uh, we'll have record. to go to Winfield. Yes, well, we'll, I've never we'll, been. We'll, so we'll, we'll maybe do another do um, another program from Winfield. Yeah, that would be quite funny. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and 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 Charter Hall. The, the the interesting thing is they they they, they ha all had their time, and they, they they sort of moved from Winfield to Charter Hall on to. Um, Ingolston and the, the 1960s and of course the weekend when Ingolston opened in 64 you had Jackie Stewart who was a, a young up and coming driver and you had Jim yeah. Clark who was contesting his what would have been back to back world titles with yeah. uh, John Surtees and Graham Hill and Jim I think all in the last Grand Prix had a chance of winning the, the can you imagine yeah. that three different British drivers yeah, going at the last Grand Prix with a chance of winning I'm sure that was the, the scenario and yeah. it was John Surtees that eventually won it of course in 64 yeah. um, so you know you've, you've got that progression of circuits and locations but the first two being in the borders is incredibly significant for the um, the appetite for sport and it, yeah. it sowed the seeds for, for so much success that, that, that followed and yeah. I think it, it showed that um, there was a real um, a strength 
about the, the members uh, of the, the uh, early clubs that were set up in, in the borders. They were, they were determined to go places with it. Yeah, I like a courier costs yeah. across Scotland and things like that. And they, were, they were determined to, to, make things, to make things happen. But um, got another point you, you raised there was his honesty, uh, yeah. Sir Jack Stewart's honesty uh, on the day. He was, he was incredibly honest. And I think um, he's a very relaxed person behind a microphone and on, fi on film. And, and not long after, again, this is something I'm, I'm sure, sure you, you, you know about, is that uh, ABC in Australia employed him as an interviewer. So he was actually interviewing Nicky Lauda. All right. James Hunt. That, yeah. Uh, and so you're talking the mid-70s. Yeah. And if you watch back footage of him talking to somebody like Nicky Lauda, yeah. not only is he very relaxed in front yeah. of the camera, but his questions are from the, the understanding of somebody who's a driver, but worded and structured in such a way that it's a question that a member of the audience would, if not yeah. be able to ask, would want the answer to. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. He, he understood his audience and what they would want to know and what they were interested in and probably their knowledge base, so he didn't yeah. make it too technical. Yeah. But I thought he, 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 he was very, very good at that and hence why he was used a lot by ABC. Yeah. Yeah. Of course he did a famous interview I think Ayrton Senna as well, didn't he? He did. <laughs> he, and, and Ayrton Senna, of course, yeah, must have had, been, was in yeah, there. Yeah, he'd been there in 1991. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I remember that one because Jackie Stewart quite triggered <laughs> Ayrton Senna. I mean, that was the term you could use back then um, because he was challenging him on his uh, uh, taking off of, of Prost yes. uh, back in uh -huh. 1990 uh -huh. and Senna uh -huh. was not too pleased. Yes. But then I, I think it was in 91 or 92 he admitted that yes. that was what he was uh -huh. set out yes. to do and that was yeah. that. Uh -huh. Um, but again, um, Senna, uh, well, Jim Clark was his hero, um, yes. and that's why he yeah. came up to see yeah. the room. And I'll never forget that picture um, of him signing the book and, and uh, being up there. You know, I, mean, and I think that the story goes that Senna's arrival was almost at the, the, the closing time of the museum, so the museum's yeah. opening was extended for the private visit of Ayrton Senna ah, right. that yeah. particular day. Yeah. It would have been amazing to turn up and, and uh, to see you know, <laughs> you know, you have to be visiting Duns <laughs> and, you're, and you're ushered out when this man comes in, you know. But because uh, I, I saw him in '93, um, not long after that, uh, when, in, uh, when he, uh, there was one Grand Prix I'd been to, it was at Donington, um, mm -hmm. and I saw him win at the European Grand Prix uh, in incredible conditions and really was the most amazing lap. We were at the Donington Loop, um, and by the time he came through, he was already in second place and he was just a little bit behind Prost. And by the time he came back into view, He'd overtaken Prost and mm -hmm. he'd gone from somewhere like sixth place at the start, uh, um, up to I think it was fifth, but then he went down to sixth at the first corner and then he came back and he was first by the end of lap one. Mm -hmm. So, an incredible, incredible experience. But it's, and uh, and th there is a man who was idolized uh, to an incredible level in Brazil, yeah, yeah, you know. I mean, he, I, he, he touched the nation yeah. in a similar way to Pele. Yeah. And yeah, to yeah. you know, Jean oh, yeah. Zinho, yeah, or these yeah. these wonderful footballers of the the, yeah. the late sixties and early seventies or, or Garincha or, or that from a slightly earlier era. Um I mean uh, Elton Senna and um you know and uh, gosh you've had some incredibly talented drivers from yeah. South America, Latin America, and, and Brazil, in, in particular Nelson Fitzgerald. Now Emerson Fittipaldi, two time world champion. You put, could put Sir Jackie Stewart and Emerson Fittipaldi together, and they could pass off as being cousins. Maybe yeah, not brothers, yeah, no, but that's there's true. a similarity there. Is, there, is a very, there. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely. Uh, they, they have, and uh, of course, Emerson Fittipaldi is famous for uh, not uh, drinking the milk yeah. uh, after the Indy 500 win. Oh uh, he was promoting <laughs> his orange juice at the time, so he uh, rather upset the organisers by. <laughs> Not I mean, going with tradition and consuming milk, but pro oh, I think promoting the one. Oh, it was about 91 <laughs> or 93 because he had the, had the success twice as he did with the two world titles. So, yeah. um, so yes, I mean, and of course, fortunately, Emerson is still very much with us. Yeah. But when, when Senna was killed, it was um, the, the morning in, in Brazil was incredible. Well, I mean, they had, it was millions of people lined the streets. I mean, I, I'll never forget that day because. I never saw it on TV. I was actually out. I had a, a conference to go to. Um, so I had to leave and, and I was listening to it on the radio. Yeah. Um, and literally, I heard obviously the accident on the radio. It was Radio 5 Live at the time that I was covering it. Um, and they, all they had said was there'd been a big accident. 
Um, but at that point I had to go and I was expecting to hear later on that well that was fine he was out of that race and then I asked um, one of my friends when I got to the conference did they, did they heard any more and they just said oh he's been taken to hospital and I thought oh and, and then of course I got back later on about nine o'clock that night and in fact it was Jackie Stewart who was on Radio 5 Live because in my flat I didn't have a TV at the time I couldn't afford a television I was not long out of school <laughs> and, and uh, it was Jackie Stewart who was being interviewed on Radio 5 Live and I knew at that point, with his, with his uh-huh. in his voice, yeah. that he had died. Yeah. That something horrendous had happened. Um, and of course, we'd had the death of Roland, Roland Ratzenberger the day before. The day before. Um, but what's quite, I had forgotten about that, and the fact that it brings it around to Jackie Stewart, that he was being asked, you know, what, what happens now when, when you lose a driver of that kind of calibre? Um, but no, it was, it, was, it was a shock, and um, it took a long time for people to kind of get going again. And be, even, you know, because motor racing, you know, we'd, we'd come to think, that people like Senna were un, unbreakable, weren't they? You know, with his and 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 he was one of the biggest, if not the biggest, at that time. Either love him or hate him. You know, I, you know, I was a Mansell fan, so you were kind of rooting for for Mansell. But you know, but if Senna did well and Mansell was out, you kind of wanted him to win. You know, um, but uh, it was an incredible thing. Um, but no, I think that's where motorsport is so. Um, it 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 does get your passion. And you do relate to the drivers because you you know especially when in the old days they would do a lot more videos where you know you'd buy the videos and and they would really tell you their kind of life story, and they don't really do that so much mm-hmm. now you know. But I think it's but maybe with with what Jackie had said at the opening, it was kind of a little bit like that because you got the the real um, story of where he had been and, and what his life was like. And you, you I mean you you got more than an, an impression that it was to some degree gladiatorial. In yeah, terms of the yeah. dangers, that oh, they, yeah, were, they, yeah. were, they were competing in in these these uh, uh, you know phenomenally fast but incredibly fragile vehicles, yeah, the shells yeah. of them, and the amount of fuel that they were carrying at any one time, and you know the the, the story when he relayed um, a particular occasion where he was driving in quite horrendous conditions and the race was completed and there was a number of casualties in drivers going off track rather than a race with a fatality yeah, yeah. Uh, and you had a scenario where Jim Clark approaches Jackie and says are you okay because That's he right. was yeah. I think he, it was a race he eventually won mm-hmm. that it was in his mind to make sure that his friends were around safely yeah yeah you know I mean and the, the relationship between so the, the um, Jackie Stewart Jim Clark, the third member of that party, and Graham Hill. Yeah, yeah. And an occasion where Jackie, as he was then, plain old Jackie, uh, in his early days, uh, coming careering off a track, steering wheel traps his legs, there's fuel spilling out of the, the vehicle, the first person on the scene to help him is Graham Hill. Goodness, yeah. You know, and he yeah. rips the steering wheel off, and he because, you know, his attitude was to help with the race. Yeah, he's my friend. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and it's uh, you know, life was far more important. But you didn't have the the stewards. You didn't have the emergency services. You didn't have yeah. the the protocol that. Yeah. So Jackie yeah, was very yeah, much yeah, yeah. at yeah. the forefront of driving forward yeah. for safety for drivers and for spectators. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was so dangerous. I mean, somebody put on a, a video of Jim Clark actually crashing at uh, Brands Hatch. Um, and he runs wide and he hits a hay bale and it goes right up yeah. and comes down and it's quite a dramatic yeah. um, accident. I mean, he, he gets out straight away um, and, you know, the straw's gone everywhere and eventually there's a few marshals running around. Yeah. Um, but the race just carries on at full speed, yeah. you know, and it's absolutely lethal. Um, and there's really no, no protection for anybody, yeah. you know. Um, but it shows you that in, in those days it, it was kind of crazy and, and uh, you know, no wonder people got killed because, I mean, it was... It just wasn't particularly um, run in the interests of of, preser- of preserving life. No, no, no. It was, as you say, a gladiatorial kind of event. It, it, it was. There was no obviously confrontation or no physical combat, but the the, the dangers was there was still so plain to see, and yeah. uh, and that would weigh heavily, incredibly heavily, on family members and partners as well as yeah. the drivers themselves. Yeah, yeah. You I know, could really wave them off. As time went back. on, for you know the the number of drivers and, and and friends that Sir Jackie lost in the time that he, he was in Formula One, was was incredible and you know incredibly sad and um, you know to have Joachim Rint 
uh, as a posthumous world champion. Yeah, you know, he yeah. died before it was really officially his uh, title in 1970. I mean, to have yeah. circumstances like that, that you think that wasn't that long ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it was some time ago, but it wasn't yeah, that long ago, yeah, you know? And, yeah. and you think that, uh, and you had a, a, a huge you know audience even then. Yeah. Limited television, limited exposure, but yeah. you still had through Pathy News and that, you yeah, know, showing yeah. cinema footage and yeah. that. I mean, they were going to, to, you know, mass audience. Yeah, I wonder if it would have been covered on radio in those days. Yes. Would it have been none yeah. live, do you think? Mm -hmm. I don't know if they had the... By the mid-60s, a lot was, was covered. It, in some ways, didn't have the same restrictions that you maybe had with a, a lot of live football. You know, at yeah, yeah. one time you had the last 20 minutes of a game live yeah. and then with cl a club game and then... In, in Scotland for a long time it was the last five minutes of the first half and all of the second half but I think uh, the um, Radio 4, BBC Radio 4 if anybody's interested st and still have available to listen back to a very interesting programme presented by Matthew Paris oh, yeah. and it's uh, a, a discussion with uh, three people, Matthew Paris was the presenter and he openly admits uh, in the beginning that motorsport isn't something that he has a, a great understanding of yeah. uh, historically or, or modern day but the, the subject around the, the, the broadcast was uh, Colin Chapman All right, yeah, and it yeah. begins with some uh, uh, radio, I'm sure it is radio rather than television commentary oh, right. yeah, because yeah. Uh, I was listening recently to um, it was a Murray Walker interview um, from F1's Beyond the Grid um, podcast, which was very, very good actually. They go into a lot of detail. Um, but now, now Murray's 95, um, but, but he didn't actually start full time with the BBC until he'd retired his job in advertising. Yes. Um, so he was 60 yes. when he actually started his proper full time yes. career yes. With, the, with the BBC yes. for Grand Prix coverage. And yes. I thought, that's incredible because you just think he's yeah. been doing it since the 50s, about 47 or 48, I think it was, yeah. when he first started. Um, a Mars a day was that yeah. one of his? Well, the, the, that was, was the, the big claim, but I think it was one of his <laughs> colleagues. According yes. to the podcast, I think yes. it was one of his colleagues who did that. But he did a few others um, yes. as well. But yeah. um, but I mean, Murray was the one. I mean, it was Murray Walker and James Hunt. Yes. It was just incredible, yeah. you know. And uh, <laughs> it was how was it? Um, it was Philip Alio driving. I think it was at a McLaren or something or some old car. Um, and James Hunt. It was at the Portuguese Grand Prix, uh, and Alio crashed and nearly took out Mansell. Um, in the process and narrowly missed him and then James Hunt comes out and says and there's Alio who always crashes anyway having another job you know having another go <laughs> it was like you know it was brilliant it was absolute classic <laughs> yeah. you know and of course um, James Hunt was the person who broke the story um, that Ayrton Senna would drive for Williams for free mm -hmm. um, Ayrton had asked him to, to drop that bombshell um, halfway through the build up um, in the French Grand Prix yeah, um, yeah. And uh, and so midway through, I remember because I had it, I had I had recorded it live on video, um, and I and I played it back, and I had the whole the whole build up, the whole coverage. Um, I think it was ninety, was it ninety two? I think it was ninety two. Yeah, it must have been ninety two because um, Frost went there in in ninety three, yeah. and that's uh -huh. when Stenner had to drive for McLaren yeah. Ford, yeah. and he was obviously wanting to drive for Williams, um, and uh, and he basically said he would drive um, for Williams for free if um, if they were going to do it. So. Um, and of course everything stopped you know yeah. <laughs> it was the way so you don't really get that nowadays yep, I mean yep, it's yep. Uh, it's quite quite incredible um, yeah. but um, what do you think I mean for for going back to you know what we now have at the Jim Clark Motorsport Museum and you've got the library you've got you've yes. been given the jacket yeah, or, or yeah, you've got to buy the jacket but it's, it's, uh, it's the, you've got the hoodie, the hoodie and the, the whole hoodie thing on, yeah. what do you think the future is for um, for motorsport in the borders do you think that there is you know is it going anywhere I mean, obviously, we've got places like Knock Hill, um, but it's still quite small. You know, it's, it's, it's maybe not on the same kind of standard as the likes of Silverstone and all these, you know, bigger circuits and things like that, or even Donington and Brands Hatch. Do you think that we can do something in Scotland to try and help, um, you know, do more for motorsport? I think individually there's always going to be talent coming through. Yeah. I think if it's in terms of facilities and an infrastructure and a track that, that is needed, then it, it does come down to pound shilling and pence and generating yeah. the, the money. Yeah. And I suppose it, it is, it's trying to get the balance between looking at the history and the, the sort of heritage and looking ahead to the future and the locations and where you could actually, you put, know, it. Yeah. actually put it. You know, there would, would there ever be a revival of 
Charter Hall, for example, yeah. um, and as, as, a, as a circuit, yeah. Yeah. as yeah. a circuit, it, it's a really, a really interesting circuit yeah. to, to drive around or to watch somebody drive around. Yeah. It certainly and is. There's lots of space there. I think you could make a lot of new track. You know, I think you could do a lot with it and make it spectacular. I think it's it depends. The, uh, it depends, I suppose, on 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 the uh, the powers that be and, and their 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 particular visions for 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 motorsport. I know that the the Jim Clark Trust are very much looking at the future and looking to sort of try and promote motorsport and, and aspects of motorsport because they would very much like to see more people from the area get involved in, in, in at some level. Yeah, yeah. In this go going forward. Uh, but it's it it is interesting because you uh, you do look at Charter Hall and, and you do sometimes think what if yeah, you know, yeah. what what if you know there was there was some bit but again it's um, it, it would take a a, well, a lot of money and a yeah. lot of time to uh, to revive and then obviously you would need to to uh, to ensure that there would be um, sufficient activity on on the track yeah and the infrastructure around and, it and to make it work to make yeah. it to make it worthwhile yeah. while you've got Knock Hill not too far away offering so much as, as yeah. well of course well I, I looked into what it costs to build a formula one circuit just out of interest yes. you know you do when you, that's the power of the internet <laughs> for you when you have a bit of time on your hands um and similarly now to get fia standard um your pit building the average cost of a new pit building um is 60 million pounds uh -huh. which actually i thought yeah. isn't yeah. actually that yeah. much when you think of what yeah. they do and yes. how big they are i mean uh, you know there yeah. were fantastic yeah. shots of monza on sunday there and you think yeah. how long yeah. that pit building is yeah. and all the rest of it um, and to build the track, to actually, or to lay the tarmac on the track for a kind of three-mile circuit is around about £60 million as well. I think what costs is all the kind of big grandstands. If you've got like these super-duper yeah. modern right. grandstands, it's quite expensive. If they're not quite to that standard, yeah. it's a bit less. Um, yeah. But uh, but no, it's, I love what they've done at Mexico. You know, when they have the kind of, the, they have the the infield section at, at Mexico yeah. when the cars come in and they've got these very very high grandstands it's yeah. kind of like a football stadium yes. Yes. and they come straight in yes. through the kind of hairpin bends and you know I think that would be the way to go if they were going to do that at Charter Hall you need something like an amphitheater <laughs> to make it all to make it all kind yeah. of work and do it properly yeah. um, but uh, but no I, I think I think it would be incredible um, and for the heritage we have in Scotland and, and especially in the borders it would be amazing yeah. you know yeah. Yeah. That, um, I mean it certainly has its place uh, cemented in Scottish motorsport with, with what it achieved in the past in terms of uh, attracting huge crowds and audiences and, and having high profile drivers yeah. dri drive drive on, on the circuit yeah. uh, and uh, the um, it's, I suppose it is it is finding that balance between the, the love and the, the heritage of something and trying to revive that and, and looking at what is the future and what is sustainable and what works and the location of something uh, and as you mentioned you know locating it so it is near uh, yeah. a, a wide um, transport infrastructure yeah, you know, yeah. it's not just the airport yeah. so we need a dual carriageway on the A1 yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. up to from Newcastle to Berwick at least and another two and lanes each, to, another yeah. two lanes each way in the Edinburgh bypass yes exactly <laughs> yes and, and a new well, and from Berwick yes. to Edinburgh yeah. would be quite yeah. good yeah. but I thought if it cuts through via um, Greenlaw in that area, that is the old A6 yeah. stage, is it? The way road it is, it goes through past Greenlaw. That would be a perfect dual carriageway because it's quite easy to do. Not much land to buy off and get it all sorted, and that's the thing. But uh, but no, you can see I'm I'm kind of that's my dream idea of, of uh, we just need about three hundred million quid. Um, you know, so <laughs> uh, we'll see how we go. Um, but uh, but no, I think I think it's amazing, and, and I have to say you did a phenomenal job. Um, talking to Jackie well, for at least half much. an hour and, and I mean I think to everyone who saw that they thought well that is you know they would think you were from Sky or from one of those <laughs> programs because really of what you're doing and no, just an enthusiastic amateur no oh, but, but well you did a very 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 yeah. good job and I mean it's it, it, your knowledge I mean that was one of the questions I was actually going to ask you I mean you know every detail of, of motorsport history you know in terms of the Jackie Stewart and Jim Clark and how did you learn all of that? Was it just your own personal research, or is it meeting a lot of the guys involved, or what's been a, a little bit of both? Yeah. A little bit of both. It's um, just find some, and it's sometimes finding a source that can within a short space, whether it be a piece of audio or a, a an article, it mm -hmm. can contain a lot of information. Yeah. So yeah. you're not necessarily reading a, a sizable piece and just extracting paragraph 
yeah. sometimes some articles can contain a, a huge amount and what yeah. you often find as well is you've got the um the uh, this, that sort of sp um, spider effect where you have a piece of information you're then attracted to go somewhere to find out a bit more about the individual that's been referred to and then that then leads you on to somewhere else and something else so you yeah. you you know it's almost you leapfrog on and you move forward uh, and you can uh, digress away in all different yeah, directions yeah. and and that i find i've got at home not all the time but at times i've got enough time to be able to do that yeah yeah so be able to look at an individual but allow myself to be distracted and go off in a different direction and mm -hmm. to look at um other other sports and I was uh, or not when I say other sports, other forms of motorsport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I was talking the other night to a, a chap who was a co-driver for a while, and we were talking about um, rallying in the the nineteen seventies and rallying oh, yeah, coverage yeah, yeah, in yeah. the nineteen seventies and Scottish uh, Rally Championship in the nineteen seventies yeah. and Harry Vatten and, and 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 some of the the absolute top drivers. Oh yeah, they were quite something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How how was it covered then? So it was yeah. covered on BBC. The what is now reporting in Scotland, yeah. um, they, they would be uh, Mary Marcus would always have a, a segment yeah, about yeah. Scottish Rally Championship. That yeah. you know the, the the rally was ongoing. You would have uh, the um, quirky uh, and a very eclectic mix of sports on World of Sport on a Saturday. Yeah, the, the rival yeah, to the grandstand. Right. Yeah, but yeah. in the early eighties, it would always dedicate half an hour, half yeah. an hour on the yeah. Saturday, yeah. on yeah. terrestrial TV. Yeah. to the Scottish Rally Championship wow. or the, or the yeah, Scottish yeah, Rally because yeah. um, they had like Rally Report they had Rally, they had rally Report, report yes. which had that great music on it yes. and right. I used to get I put it on my yeah. iTunes yeah. a wee while ago and the funny thing was I was played it in front of my mother-in-law we had been helping her move house and we were in a hire van and I forgot <laughs> that it was on it was, I'd had it on the Bluetooth thing and the first thing that comes on is a kind of and it was icy all around it was in January when we moved her and, and she said what music is that and I said it's the rally music you know you, know, you better put your seatbelt on you know, you know what, the, what about all my luggage you know it was like, so we had a great time um, but no it had real atmosphere because you had Tony Mason wasn't it? And then, and I don't know, Mike Walker did bits and pieces of that, but I know Tony Mason did it, and a few others did it. To, Tony Mason was was was, was uh, again, uh, you know, somebody who I I've, I've been lucky enough to meet Tony. Mason. In fact, I'll be twenty still, years ago. Is he still alive? I think yes, I think he's he's still yeah, he's yeah. still with us uh, as as we speak just now. He he was at uh, the Jim Clark Rally in nineteen ninety nine, and I remember talking to him at the Lantern Water Splash. Yeah. On the oh Eden, yeah. Yeah. Eden yeah. Stage, um, and again he was. Uh, I think again, if memory serves correct, co-driver to Roger Clark about eighteen seventy-three. Yes, yeah, and Tiffany Dell. Uh, and they do Top Gear yep. rallies, and they they won them. They won one yeah. once, but uh, um, so yeah, so yes, yeah. you know these these characters would spring up, and you would just take nuggets of information from them. You would go on, you'd find an article that was well written and detailed, and it was yeah. compact with a lot of information in there. And yeah. then there's others where you would you know spread yourself across different internet pages and that and find out information that way the internet certainly made it yeah, a lot yeah, easier yeah. Uh, than, it, than it perhaps uh, would have been otherwise and, and I've been a huge beneficiary of, of uh, um, many um, websites that are maybe dedicated to an individual um, sports personality mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. a, a club or a, a, an organisation or that uh -huh. so it's um, that, yeah. that, 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 that's helped but I think it's um, you 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 just um, you're always sort of open and, and ready to consume information and try yeah. and retain that. The difficulty is to try and retain it and then use it without forcing it out. Yeah, and yeah. you know just drop in little snippets yeah. or, or facts or that if is, you're doing an interview right. prod yeah. with a, a you know a a, a a question or a um, a point yeah. that, that maybe contains some information that the interview can then latch on to and then yeah. take off with it. So who would be, here's a, here's a question for you, if you could interview one of the current kind of Formula One drivers, um, who would be, who would be one that you think would be quite, quite interesting and quite fun to do? Um, You're walking past the Jim Clark room one day and along, along turns up a limo. <laughs> out, pops, out pops a driver well, and uh, I, I, you I just happen to, to be in the right place at the right time. I, I have to say that I would be... 
I would be very interested to see um, and hear uh, Lewis Hamilton's response yeah. to it. Yeah, know, yeah, that would be the thing. If he came, that would be something. Uh, the, you know, because you know he's, you know, he's he's, he's created some some history in, in in very recent times. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. In sort of British British motorsport in terms, but to to hear him and and because he clearly has a a, a huge respect and a great understanding for. Um, drivers, particularly the British drivers from yeah. from, from the past. Yeah. So I'd I'd be hard pushed, you know, if 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 for that very reason, I was given the opportunity to pick one. It, it might be, you know, a, a rather pr predictable sort of way to to go yeah. with it. And uh, I mean, Charles Leclerc, it'll be interesting yeah, to see how, how, he, how, goes how, how he goes on yeah. and uh, what he makes of things at the moment. But I mean, the racing's been fantastic. The last five or six races, really, apart from France. Um, yes. After that was brilliant. We had some good races before then, but e even um, Monaco, when you consider the, yeah. the, the, the situation with uh, Lewis Hamilton's tires, yeah, yeah, he, had tire on. That. He, he did yeah. hang on. He was quite. There was a lot of anxiety in his yeah. voice when he was relaying back on the radio to, um, you know, to, to the team uh, yeah. about the, the the tire slice. But he did, and and he, you know, he maybe a Lewis Hamilton of of not yesteryear but of an earlier. Uh, age would have yeah maybe struggled, maybe struggled to but, but it was a good circuit also for that necessarily to happen because of yeah. the, the difficulty with the overtaking now there you're talk, talking there about reviving something Monaco is a treasured uh, yeah. race and a treasured uh, occasion it's you know the, the, one of the, the jewels in the crown yeah. I don't know if you'd ever get a Monaco starting now that would run for yeah. 70 80 yeah. 90 years yeah. Incredible. Um, in a city but yeah. it, you know to have that history going back yeah. and I want to get your thoughts on, on something um, yeah. here actually this, this is something I spoke to a few people about and I don't know what the, the viewers and listeners will think about this but the one of the, the drivers from the this um, in, in, in some respects now be careful how I word this it, it, it was a, a golden age in some respects. Now it, it had the horrors of some horrendous deaths, and that. But but there, there was a there, there was also as, as Jackie Stewart sort of referred to that there was that um, a glamour and the, the magic to it. But there was the the other side. It was a Jekyll and Hyde sport. You know, yeah, you had the horrors yeah. of the, the, the accidents, but you had the, the glamour and the the pizzazz beginning to show itself in motorsport in the sixties. Graham Hill. If Graham Hill was a Scot, given what he'd achieved, how would Scotland recognise Graham Hill? Because to me, Graham Hill's achievements, you know, are standing alongside Jackie Stewart, standing alongside Jim Clark, yeah, yeah. I don't think his, his achievements have been appreciated yeah, and shown yeah, in the yeah. way that they perhaps should have done, in the way that there's, there's maybe a bit more in, in Scotland. Maybe it's a smaller country, a smaller nation, but when you consider what he achieved... Yeah, to, two to, world championships. To, to win the yeah. 62, 68, to, to win Indianapolis in 66, yeah, yeah. To, to win uh, Le Mans, yeah. and to win... He and to Monaco, boss Monaco. Yeah. To yeah, boss yeah. Monaco. He was a king. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, him and Prince Rainey were, you know, yeah. they, they were the, 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 almost the dream team. Yeah, yeah. To have... To, to have all that success. I mean, how many British world champions were there in the sixties in Formula One? Well, you, you, you had, you had you four. Know. I think you had four. You had. No, f but you had five. Five in all, because um, um, sixty-two for Graham Hill. Sixty-two for Graham Hill. Sixty-three and five for Jim Clark. John Surtees was sixty-four. sixty-four Jackie was sixty-nine. Mike Hawthorne was a uh, fifty-eight, and there was yeah. the chap Hill in. Not Graham Hill. It was a, uh, there was another one. I'm, I think I'm missing one. From uh, the, I, I thought I'm wondering if I'm missing one out in in that order. Uh, people people will be shouting me that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but just just off the yeah, you're looking at at, at that. Well, that was a shoot. When you think like four or five at least um, yeah. British world champions, you yeah. know, year in year out, kind of you know, which is really quite incredible. Yeah. Um, but uh, no, it, it was it was an incredible era, and I think as you say, he's kind of downplayed. Yeah, I think even Damon Hill was downplayed when yeah. you think I mean he won it in 96 it was quite a dominant season um, but in 94 when he was against Schumacher mm -hmm. all of that was a huge race I mean as epic 
um, a victory in Japan in the wet when it was a, they, they stopped the race and then it was in two parts mm -hmm. and he beat Schumacher by about I think it was about a second in the end but it, nobody knew until he crossed the line exactly what it was going to be like you know and and he and you know he, he stayed ahead of Schumacher mm -hmm. in in horrendous conditions so I think um, yeah no they're definitely I was a big Damon Hill fan and and uh, it was quite a quite a, a time um, to see uh, him drive and that you know but. Uh, yeah, it's it's an incredible sport. I think the eighties as well was was in was amazing. Um, you know when you always remember Mansell's blowout in Adelaide in eighty six when his tire blew and and that was and, it. And, and Buddy Walker almost and, blew with yeah, it. Mansell, Mansell, yeah, and that, yeah. he's fighting for control. You know yeah, it was the yeah. it was incredible. Um, and that was one of the first races I ever watched. Um, on TV, and that was uh, it was it had been recorded because it was the middle of the night or whenever it was live and from Adelaide. Um, and I remember watching it in the morning and my mum and dad allowed me to record it and, and I couldn't believe uh, this was incredible watching it all you know these old fuzzy onboard shots you know but, um, but when you see the onboard shots in the 60s and the 70s and that on these cars that were you know fighting along and um, and we're just thinking the fuel tank was basically in between their legs. Mm -hmm. You know, it was mm -hmm. incredibly dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, and you think now, you know, it's it's so much safer. And um, although there was a horrendous accident with poor old Anton Hubert, who was killed in the Formula Two race mm -hmm. uh, back in Belgium, mm -hmm. um, but it's but it takes a kind of freak accident now to yeah. really kind of cause that, rather because they are so well run and the tracks are, are very very carefully designed. You know, but. No, it's an incredible sport, and um, and talking about it with you tonight has been absolutely fascinating. Um, and I'm sure for our listeners and viewers, if you have any questions, you can email us at podcast at cardioadvisor.co.uk. Um, if you have any questions for Stuart, I will pass them on um, once we receive them. Um, but uh, it's been really, really fantastic to, to speak to you tonight, Stuart. Thank you. I, I was going to say, you very much. I don't know how we, <coughs> sometimes you finish with a question and you say, what would be your, your, your question for our viewers or, or um, you know, how you see motorsport developing in Scotland? But I think, as you say, that as the talent comes up, they, just, they go through the, the ranks and, and then it, Scotland yeah. does seem to have a thing about making great yeah. drivers. So yeah. hopefully that will continue yeah. and we'll see, see how it goes. Also, yeah. sim racing. Sim yeah. racing is the thing now with simulators. So um, I would like eventually to get a, a centre in Duns and have a proper number yes, of sims. Yes, I've, I've heard, heard, heard you talking about that before. Yeah, yeah that is yeah. my long-term yeah. goal. Yeah. Um, so hopefully yeah. I might not be able to raise yeah. 300 million yeah. for a track, but yeah. I might not be able to raise 300 quid for a sim. But it might be a bit of a Top Gear special, that one, I think. Um, but uh, well, you, you were asking me, do I have a question for the listeners? I, yeah. I would be interested to, to see what the listeners and viewers have to say about Graham Hill. Yeah, was, yeah, that could great, be our question. Great, Graham Hill's you know, achievements you, fully appreciated and yeah. fully recognised. Maybe not so much appreciated because I'm yeah. sure they were. That, that's, yeah. that, but maybe recognised. Yeah. Has yeah. he been recognised in yeah. the way he deserved? Because I just feel that, you know, Jim Clark. And the family and the trust have, have done so much to, and the town and the borders and, and Scottish sport. But I, 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 I feel that his, uh, Graham Hill's achievement is phenomenal as yeah. well. Yeah, oh yeah. And as you were saying, to, to have this conveyor belt of, of incredible talent yeah. and to have Graham yeah. Hill and, and Jim Clark in the same team in, in 68. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's really you know, Jim Clark wins the, on, the, on New Year's Day in, in, in uh, South Africa. Uh, 68 and Graham goes on and wins the world title that yeah, year after, yeah. after Jim's death yeah and that must have been you know, horrendous um, but um, but no that's the thing well we'll end on a, on a positive note yes, um, yes thank indeed. you very much Stuart and thank you to all our listeners and viewers you've been watching and listening the, to the car sim and race driver show with me Hugh Hattrick and my very special guest and commentator extraordinaire Stuart McFarlane. You can hear him. Is it Radio Borders? Radio Borders. Uh, and I'm actually uh, I'm heading off to Japan. Japan? Heading off to Japan. Oh, for, this, for, for the, the World Cup? World Rugby World Cup. Oh, fantastic. Yes. So, um, yes, oh, well. I'm, I'm off, uh, off there. Uh, so that's, uh, that's brilliant. another experience. Yeah, oh, that'll be good. Hopefully Scotland can come back with a good few... Uh, bits of silverware there. That, yeah, that and and nice. some plaudits. Yes, that would be good. Come back with plaudits. They've got to get out of the, out of the, out of the group final stages yes. again to the semi finals <laughs> yes. and yes. hopefully further up. That would be fantastic. But uh, take care and remember our motto drive fast and try not to crash. See you next week. Bye bye. There we go.